In the early 80s, this artist came home for lunch and he checked his answer machine. Couldn't believe his ears. One of the biggest movie stars in the world told him to call him right back. I mean, he thought it was someone trying to prank him. But when he called back, it was really him. Now, this movie star wanted him to write and record the theme to a sequel to one of the greatest franchises ever. Uh, apparently, Queen had turned him down. Uh, this movie star, this icon, was willing to give uh, his band a chance, even though they'd never had a hit. Coming up next, the co-writer tells one of the greatest stories that I've ever heard in any interview about a song. Uh, about one of our generation's greatest anthems. It's coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you want to go back in time and experience your richest memories through music, the stories behind the songs, this is your channel. Uh, story straight from the legends. We also have a Patreon. You got to check it out. Cool stuff you won't find anywhere else and get our new merch, including our latest Vintage Years collection. Click on the link below for that. So it's time for another edition of our series, Revelations. This is where artists and bands take us for a deep dive into their greatest songs and their greatest albums. Uh, facts and information, stories you won't find anywhere else. Today, we have the story of one of the greatest anthems of the 80s, or any decade. A song that every 80s kid knows by heart. I'm talking about Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. Jim Peter tells us the story of how Sylvester Stallone pitched his answering machine and offered this up-and-coming band, Survivor, I mean, he was scrapping for their first hit since nothing had happened for him yet. And Stallone had actually been rejected by Queen. He wanted to use another one bites the dust. Yeah. Another one bites the dust. So out of this came the anthem of the decade, a number one hit. Uh, but the struggle to get there in how they had to write the perfect lyric and how they had to place it in the film, all of this is really astonishing. For my money, it's got to be one of the greatest stories of a song from any interview I've ever done. It's just a blast. Let's get right into it. Now, as we go into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eye, where the glasses I always jam. Make sure to download Zenny's new app to get their latest deals and design your own pair of glasses, the color, the shape, the size, and the style. You're going to love it, starting at $6.95. Here's Jim Peterick with the story. The Survivor formed in 78. You have your first top 40 hit with Poor Man's Son, which went to number 33. And then Destiny hits. Destiny you come hits. home, turn on the answer machine, a couple messages go by. Right. Somebody that sounds like Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. Tell us that story. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean, literally, I listen to my sister's message, this and that, and then I hear, hey, yo, Jim, give me a call. It's Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> I go, yeah, right. Come on. You thought it was your, like, tour manager, I thought it was right? our tour manager, Sal, because he was Italian and kind of <laughs> yeah. sounded that way, you know. And I played it for Karen. By the way, Karen was the girl that I rode vehicle for. Yeah. 47 years later, I'm still her vehicle. I know. Yeah, that's married so that, awesome. that long, and she's... That's like 150 years in entertainment. I know, that's like dog <laughs> years, man. But yeah, she's my toughest critic and my biggest fan. Man. Yeah. And I, she's, she's awesome. And I, I played it for Karen. She said, you better call him back. Yeah, that's Stallone, you know, okay. So <laughs> so I dialed the uh, the LA number, and I go, uh, hi, uh, is this really... So this is Jim Peterick. Is this uh, Sylvester Stallone? He goes, yeah, Jim, call me Sly. You know, Sly. I said, Here I am calling my hero, Sly, because Karen and I couldn't have been bigger fans of yeah. the first Rocky and the second Rocky. Oh, yeah. So it was, it was a surreal moment. I mean, no secretary, no nothing. It was him that answered the phone. He answers, yo, by the way. He doesn't say hi. <laughs> right. Yeah, or hello. Yo. Yo. Hey, yo, Mike. Yo, Tony. Go, Adrian. Go, Adrian. It's me, Rocky. Go, Adrian. So he said, man, I love your band, Survivor. Tony Scotty, the record company president, played me the song Poor Man's Son. That's the sound I want for my new uh, movie, Rocky Three. Can yeah. you help me out? He's like, I want something street. Something street, you know? Yeah. That, that, that Bickler, he's got that street sound. And something for the kids, you know? You know the story better than I do. <laughs> so I want something for the kids. You know, that was when I was a kid, you know, yeah. so I could do that. Well, also, they wanted something different than going to fly now. Yep. <laughs> Yep. 
you grabbed the Beatles piano book. Yes, I still have that too. That Karen had. I still have that. You turned it around and you wrote all those notes. I down. did, yeah. And his phone numbers on there, and I misspelled Stallone. It was it was just crazy. <laughs> I still have those that. Ideas. And then when he when you called me, or the message said. Yo, because answer machines were a new thing back oh, then. Oh, yeah. And he kind of said, nice message. Yeah, that was the first thing he said. Nice <laughs> nice message you got there, Jim. <laughs> That's really funny. But, uh, you know, he said, I'm going to send you the uh, the rough cut of the movie. Actually, at first, he said, I'm going to send you the first three minutes. So the first three minutes comes, and I, I, I had to rent this giant Betamax recorder. Yeah. The pro, you know. <laughs> Set it on my kitchen counter, call Frankie Sullivan over, you know, guitar player in yeah. the band. And we watch this opening montage and Mr. T's rising up and Stallone's getting soft doing MasterCard commercials, you know? Yeah. And we turn the volume on and it's boom, boom, boom. Another one bites the dust. I call up Stallone. Hey, Sly, you got a song already. What are we doing? Yeah, like, this is perfect. He said, turn down the sound. I can't use it. I couldn't get the publishing rights. Thank God. I know. I think Queen was one of your favorite bands. Oh, yeah. Queen yeah. was amazing. But I thank him for turning that one down. Oh, yeah. Because that gave us a shot at the title song. But also, you had like this, I read this in your biography. This mm -hmm. is so cool. You're like, man, how are we going to top this? I mean, well, it's right. Queen, another one bites the dust, one of the greatest songs of all time. And that was your challenge. That was the challenge. That so was, that was like in the in the front of your mind the whole time. That was the Rocky challenge, man. Yeah. It, it was meant to be. But, you know... I got that. I, I had my Les Paul around my neck and it just started going, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. You know, we had the pulse of that thing. And I saw the punches being thrown. I go, bop, 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 A minor, you know, bop, 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 wait for a punch. Bop, 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 yeah. which screws up all the drummers all the time. I know. You know, but I was waiting to, I was trying to score the punches with the chords. You yeah. Know? So we got that far, and I look at Frankie, where do we go from here? So I called up Stallone, Sly, hey, Jimbo. Yeah. <laughs> By this time, I'm pretty comfortable. And uh, yeah. I said, um, man, you got to send us the whole movie. Oh, I can't, man. You know, they wouldn't let us. Do, you know, if it got out, you know, you got to send it. Do you want your song? You know? So the wow. next day, FedEx comes. We watch that whole movie. Frankie comes over again. And that's when what the whole trust. Thing. I mean, that's, this is it back was great. in the eighties. I it's know gonna, yeah. that was uh, he knew, yeah. but you got to send it right back. We did anyway. <laughs> uh, so you know, that's when the whole thing made sense, and, and the dialogue was all there, and that inspired parts of the song. I mean, including the title, "Eye of the Tiger." When Apollo says, "Eye of the Tiger," man, "Eye of the Tiger." When he's talking to Rocky, got to get that look back, Rock. "Eye of the Tiger," man, "Eye of the Tiger." Come on. He's going, Rocky, you're losing the eye of the tiger, you know? And I look at Frankie and go, eye of the tiger. Yeah. If we don't call it that, we're idiots, you know? And that's when it all started. The next day, Frankie and I got together to try to pound out the lyrics. And he came up with the, the first seed of the lyric. He said, uh, back on the street, doing time, taking chances. I go, wow, that sounds cool. I said, how about rising up, back on the street, did yeah. my time, took my chances. And then we were off to the races. I was a jogger, and I still am. And as I was racing down the street, I'm thinking of Rocky training, right. you know. And I'm writing lyrics like crazy, you know. I still got all the rough drafts, yeah. you know, and the stuff crossed out. And in fact, that's in my Hall of Shame. That original thing, I had this one line, uh, rising up, ready to spring. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no. You don't, you don't want to spring in this song, yeah. yeah. But, well, you went to the piano too, yeah. and it was had an R and B feel. It, to it did, it. yeah. That's what really makes the song go. In it my is opinion. R and B. No, nobody it realizes is. that. It really you know? is, yeah. yeah. And that combined with with Frankie's sensibility on guitar, yeah. you know, it just was magic. Five days later, we're at a Chicago Recording Company recording the demo, and oh man, one take. Because you guys all hit your parts. He came in at the end there in that one take. I mean, that vocal. Oh, my God. Incredible. Well, I don't know if you know this, uh, but you probably do because you know more than I do. But <laughs> no. uh, the uh, the version you hear in the movie is the demo. Yeah. 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 Which, uh, you know, and it's so close. It's so close. I know the differences. But the normal the normal person may, may not know that. Nor would he know that the sound quality is not nearly as good as the master. But what's funny, you know, it took us like a day and a half to record the demo. And then uh, we went to Rumbo and we're recording the album. And uh, 
you know, Frankie was really the proponent. Jim, we got to recut this. I said, it's fine. It's got the feel. Yeah, but it was recorded, you know, quickly. And well, great. And we did. We, we beat the original, but it took us a month to do it, you know, because the, ma- the magic was, you, you've heard of demoitis. Oh, yeah. When you, you, you're fired up, you, you do a take and it's magic. Then you do the real version in a real studio. Oh, yeah. And it's tough, but uh, it, it worked out great. So we got the sound quality and we got the emotion of it. It was great how you took the different pieces of the dialogue and found that depth in it. And I want to talk about some of the lyrics that have become like part of the pop culture lexicon. Mm-hmm. You know, like, trade your passion for, for glory. glory. Yeah. Don't lose your grip on the dreams of the past. Must fight just to keep, keep them, them alive. alive. I mean, yeah. that has been like the mantra for so many people. You must fight just to keep them alive. Well, you know, that song was my mantra. It really was. And I still use that song when I get depressed or in the dumps or in a situation that, you know, like, how do I get out of this one? We still go, everybody goes through that stuff. And for me, the key line is rising up to the challenge of your rival. As much as you'd love to think the whole world loves you, you're going to have yeah. rivals. You're going to have people that uh, are not your best friend. Yeah. You know? And uh, you got to stand up. Face to face, out of no the chorus was great because you thought you had to rhyme survival well, and, yeah. and tiger. Tell me about that. Well, yeah. Uh, before we really had settled on the, the title, Eye of the Tiger, I was calling it survival. And hence the, the inner rhyme of rising up to the, to the challenge of your rival. Uh, and the last note Survivor stalks is Prey of the Night. Uh, and the name of the game is Survival. Survival. Yeah. And suddenly I said, I don't care if it rhymes. Exactly. Nobody complains so far, you know. Yeah. So it became Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. And that, I mean, that chorus is just one of the greats of all time. Thank I you. just love it. But the other thing is the last verse, when you brought it to Stallone, he's oh, yeah. the sly, he said, He or, says, you got verse. a little lazy on me. Yeah. That was the quote. And we go, oh, man, damn. You know, <laughs> but we, we were very clever because yeah. we took a lot of the pieces of the first verse. You did. And, and that was good because yeah. there was familiarity to it. And yet well, it's, it's like you're coming back, though. That's what I love about right. the song is it's a three-act play. Yeah. The, th- the verses are each an act in, in life, right. what we go through. Well, that's true. And, and the first uh, verse, of course, rising up uh, back on the street, did my yeah. time, took my chances. Then it becomes rising up straight to the top. Yeah, yep. the guts got the glory. Yep. Uh, went the distance, I'm not going to stop. stop. Just a man and his will, will to, survive. to survive. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, every line means something in that song. And when Stallone called us uh, about a year and a half later, we were on the road with REO, said, hey, you guys got to do it again. Rocky IV, we, we need the title cut. The point is, we knew that every line in, in Burning Heart had to be great, too. There's, you can't have a deadline, because Stallone is a brilliant script writer. He has no deadlines in, in his scripts. No. And you can't have it in the song. So we knew the expectations were, were really high. Yeah. And it won a Grammy. Sadly, you weren't there. I read that. In oh, the I know. That was home with heartbreaking. Cold pizza. Heartbreaking. Watching yourself win the Grammy I know. not being there. I know. Oh. It, was, it was tough. You know, it was a kind of a call of solidarity because uh, they wouldn't send the whole band invites. And, um, you know, there's certain members of the band that felt that it's got to be the whole band. Yeah. But it was bittersweet. But, of course, not only for an Oscar, which Cisco and Ebert, I remember as a kid rooting for it. He, they, he predicted said, they predicted it would, it would win. Yes, I, I thought it would because, I mean, it was my favorite song as a kid. Well, I, I remember buying the 45, yeah, you know, and playing yeah. it until it wore out. Now my kids are listening to well, it, you know. God, you know, every generation <laughs> seems to discover that song. I know. I love that. But I remember sitting in the audience with my wife, uh, Karen, and Frankie and his wife, Gloria. And, you know, it's that moment when... You're waiting, and I had the speech all prepared. You yeah. Know? Of course, you have to. And uh, they say, and the winner is, love lift us up where we belong. I go, oh, <laughs> yeah. it's a great song, though. I, yeah. I couldn't begrudge it. Love lift us up where we belong. The Oscars were so weird in the 80s with best original song because they would have other people perform <sighs> the songs. Like Phil Collins didn't get to perform his own song. And, and you know who? 
who did die yeah, of the, the attack. Temptations. The temptations they're doing these with the dance, these stuff. spiffly, you know, these, <laughs> these bits bad. And we're like, oh, good. I know. Uh. The other thing, too, is that Jane Fonda. You actually went up to her. <laughs> this is great. This is at yeah. the People's Choice Awards. Tell me about that. And uh, that was a great, a great award because it literally is the People's Choice. It's not the critics or anything or the Academy. Yeah. And uh, we knew we were going to get the award. There's no surprise there. They tell you. And there's these big round tables, and I'm sitting there with the band. And and over here is my my one of my heroes or heroines, uh, Jane Fonda. Because Karen and I, we would go in the living room every day and work out to the Jane Fonda. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Thing, you know. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Looks, sounds silly now, but it was a great workout. No, that's, everybody did that in the So I, I go up to her and, and I said, Jane, this, I'm Jim Peterick. You know, I, I uh, Survivor, uh, Eye of the Tiger, that's my song. I, I want to tell you, I work out to your Jane Fonda workout. She, that's really nice because I work out to Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> I love that. It's made my day. Well, let's talk about his impact on pop culture. I mean, of course, in Rocky Three, the way they used it was so incredible because very first of the movie, setting up the movie perfectly where you're seeing, Miss, like you said, Mr. T. Clubber Lang, you know, doing his thing. And Rocky's like enjoying the riches of what he's done and, and letting his guard down. Sure. And it sets up the entire movie. Yep. And it really became that montage that everybody copied after that, right? That's true. <laughs> it's an iconic montage. But when it was time to make the music video, this is the very early days yeah. of, of, uh, oh, yeah, MTV. of MTV. Uh, I remember that the film company wanted us to do a, a, a video where it would be intercut uh, scenes from Rocky Three right. and us performing the song, which is, was a very, very cool idea. Uh, but Frankie had this idea of creating a video where we become the Rocky story. And it shows us, you know, rehearsing in a, in a dingy, you know, warehouse, walking down the street, uh, like we're going to make it, you know? Yeah. And then finally at the end, you know, the lights and the cameras and we're doing Eye of the Tiger. So it became a, like a mini Rocky story. I, I just wish I didn't wear that big white sweatshirt. <laughs> you know, when you're a little overweight, you don't wear a big white sweatshirt. <laughs> I still can't watch that video, but it made me lose weight. Oh, man. And it's been used so much in like The Simpsons. Family Guy. Rising up, back on the street. Breaking Bad. Yeah. Did you see how they use it in Breaking Bad? No. Oh, it's so uh, that's cool. That's my favorite show of all time. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Big Bang Theory was so cool. Yeah. It's the ear of the bat. It's the whiskers of the catfish and the wall. My kids found it from Big Hero 6. And you know, I'm listening to 45 at seven years of age. My kids at eight or nine are listening on their Amazon Alexa, right? Yes, <laughs> This is so great. Oh, man. Supernatural. <laughs> but Katy Perry. Oh, boy. Roar. I got the eye of the tiger. When I heard that, I have to admit, I was like, what? I know. You ruined the song. No, you can't do this. This is my childhood. You know? I was very uh, <laughs> conflicted over what to do with that. Yeah. In the end, um, I didn't do anything. Well, I think it brought more eyeballs to it. But the difference is, is that's a song that was a number one hit and it lasts for a few years. But mm -hmm. I Have the Tiger a thousand years from now well, will be that's, there. That's my hope. But it, it, they did a great job on that song. They did. And they, they name-checked a few other songs, so we weren't alone, yeah. you know? We were rock you. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So we're in good but company. But the Eye of the Tiger, I mean, that's the <laughs> that's the hook of that song. Yeah, I know. You know, but Weird Al, Rye of the Kaiser. The best. <laughs> What'd you the think best. of that when well, that Well, at happened? first, when, when we got the request from, from Al's people, it was like, man, this is our, our grand anthem, and he's making it a, a song about a, a deli owner, you know? About Rocky about, you know, owning a deli later on in his years. It's hilarious, know. you know? <laughs> Stay away from the tuna. It <laughs> smells funny t today. Yeah. And uh, do you want your corned beef on the rye or the Kaiser? Ba ba ba. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So today, his daily comes first. At the end of the day, uh, my manager called and said, 
you know what, Jim? You gotta approve this. Michael Jackson just approved. Uh, was eat it? it? Eat it. Yeah. Just eat it. Eat it. Get if he can do it, you can do it. I called Frankie. No problem. Oh yeah. So every royalty statement, I see it near the end. Theme from Rocky Thirteen. X amount of dollars. <laughs> I love it. You said it so perfectly. It's simplicity with a message. Right. I love that. That's right. What it is. I mean. It would have been really easy to glitz it up and add, um, you know, guitar solos and lavish strings and this and that. The beauty of it is there's these only a few elements going on at that time, and it makes you focus on the words and the beat and the timing of it. Like you said, that oh, guitar part, yeah, that was so brilliant because you're timing it to the punches. But right. when you're listening to a song, you're kind of focused on it. But then when something like you're like, "What the heck is that?" That's yeah, what it, yeah, that's well, what that song yeah. does to you every well, time. Right. And I knew it was going to throw people off, especially drummers. But but I, I knew it had to be there. But it's such a simple, really a simple song and a simple arrangement. And what a huge message. Yeah. It, well, it is. And it, to me, as a songwriter. The best gift I can get is the stories that people come up to me and, and people that have beaten cancer and uh, gotten up from wheelchairs just go, or going across the finish line at a marathon with that song on constant shuffle play. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever it is, uh, the positive message, I can't have a better gift than that. I want to end on a story about the five-year-old at the pizza place. That's kind of oh, when you knew yeah. that... I got something here. Tell us that. Yeah, story. you know, it's it's one thing, you know, going to the Hollywood premiere of of Rocky, and you're on the red carpet with all these famous people, and they show the the film, and you know, the people are applauding. You know, and yeah. it's very nice, but th those aren't real people. I mean, they're yeah. industry people. I yeah. mean, they are. You know what I mean? Uh, and it wasn't really until I was on the road with with uh, with Survivor. And uh, we still didn't know if this was going to be a mega smash or not. And uh, I was kind of a loner on the road a lot of times. So I went to a, a pizza hut. And I remember, or it was a Shakey's, one yeah. of those brilliant places. <laughs> I think it was Shakey's. It was on a lower level and they had a jukebox. And someone played Eye of the Tiger. And I'm going, hmm, cool. Of course, nobody knows me from Adam. And uh, this little girl jumps up. She's like five years old. Mommy, Daddy, they're playing my song. They're playing my song. She went to the dance floor, starts twirling around and, and punching. And I go, this is going to be huge. Maybe I'll with the wrong guy. Oh, wasn't that a blast? Leave us a comment about Eye of the Tiger. What are your memories of this song? I mean, from 1982 to 1988, they killed it, Survivor did. Why did they never have another hit after that? Why do you think? I'm curious to get your take. Uh, what do you think? Is Eye of the Tiger the greatest movie anthem ever? If not, what is? Let's, let me know in the comments. If you dig our content, make sure to subscribe below so you never miss out on a video. We would love to have you as part of this community. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Mm -hmm.